Hello SpaceX fans, we are back with another video for you to quench your thirst for all things space. So buckle right in, because we are going on a flight to the stars. But before we move on, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. In this video, we will be bringing you up to date with the recent developments in the crazy world of SpaceX. Right now, SpaceX is the undisputed king of space. Their rockets can carry more for less and soon could even take us to Mars. Musk looks set to have yet another monopoly on his hands, but Spin Launch has come up with a novel launch system that propels crafts into space, significantly undercuts SpaceX in price and uses carbon neutral fuel. This startup wants to slingshot rockets into Earth's orbit, called Spin Launch. The startup has developed a unique launch pad to launch rockets into orbit. Spinning really fast in a circle creates a force strong enough to push a moving object out and away from the center of its path. But what happens when that moving object is a rocket that weighs thousands of pounds? We might find out as soon as this year when spin launch starts suborbital test flights of a rocket that is launched using an enormous centrifuge. Using a suborbital accelerator that is larger than the Statue of Liberty, rockets could be sent into space in a more sustainable way in the future. Current methods launch rockets into orbit vertically and use a lot of fuel. Spin Launch claims that this acceleration dependent method will be more environmentally sustainable and less expensive. Here's the gist. A centrifuge the size of a football field will spin a rocket around in circles for about an hour until its speed eventually exceeds 5,000 miles per hour. At that point, the rocket and its payload will feel forces of 10,000 times stronger than gravity. When the centrifuge finally releases the rocket at launch speed, it should, practically speaking, fly through the stratosphere until it fires its engines at the periphery of our atmosphere. The concept sounds ludicrous, but stakeholders like the US government have taken a liking to it. In June, Spin Launch signed a responsive launch prototype contract with the Department of Defense to build out its kinetic energy based launch system that will provide a lower cost option for the ever growing satellite industry. Spin Launch hopes its new system will replace rocket boosters, which currently augment a rocket's own thrust power to escape the gravitational pull of Earth and happens to be one of the most expensive components of a rocket launch. Even reusable boosters, like the ones powering the SpaceX Falcon 9, still require costly fuel and ongoing maintenance. Beyond the foreign concept of flinging rockets into space by spinning them around in circles until they're going really fast, the hardest to swallow pull of the entire project is the sheer size of the centrifuge required to pull it off. Thing is, you can't just ask contractors to build a giant vacuum chamber for your larger than life centrifuge. When the engineers at Spin Launch did that, they faced a lonely bidder with an estimated price of $20 million. So they built one themselves. It took the team eight months, a few vacuum pumps on eBay and a $500,000 worth of steel to build the world's sixth largest vacuum chamber by diameter. This first centrifuge model while 40 feet across, was still too small to slingshot a rocket into space. Still, it established the underlying design for the final product, which would have to be bigger. The first prototype of the Spin Launch suborbital accelerator was first seen last month near Spaceport America in New Mexico. The prototype also established some of the mechanisms the final centrifuge would need to work. A long arm called a tether, for instance, connects a bearing to a motor, while the payload attaches to the end of the tether to keep everything in one place, despite the strain of being tossed in circles at more than dizzying pace. The tether is built from materials with strong structural integrity, like Kevlar or carbon fiber. In the end, the final centrifuge actually broke the world record for the world's fastest rotational system. Not exactly the kind of thing you'd want to replace with an amusement park tilt a whirl, thanks to its breakneck acceleration. Since then, the team has tested a bunch of space equipment in the centrifuge. Solar cells, radio systems, telescope lenses, GPS, batteries, computers, even an iPhone. All of these could withstand the force of the centrifuge. Most of the launch work is done by the centrifuge, Spin Launch says, therefore rockets don't have to be built with extreme efficiency in mind under this framework. 
Today's rockets can only handle payloads that take up a relatively small fraction of their overall mass, as most of that weight has to be designated for rocket fuel. The 25-foot long spin launch rocket, by comparison, will be stocky and able to hold payloads of up to 200 pounds. Less rocket fuel is required for launch via centrifuge. As the rocket spins in centrifuge, a port will open for a fraction of a second to let the rocket shoot out. Per company patents, a counterbalance that spins in the opposite direction will also be released to prevent the tether from becoming unbalanced. After coasting for about a minute, the rocket will ignite its engines at approximately 200,000 feet in altitude. At that point, little atmospheric pressure will be left to challenge the rocket's ascent. So the rocket should only require about a minute's worth of fuel to reach orbital speeds of about 17,500 miles per hour. Finally, a last 10 second burn will push the rocket into orbit. If all goes to plan, Spin Launch says it can reduce the cost of sending satellites into orbit by a factor of nearly 20. And to boot, the company believes it will eventually be able to launch up to 5 rockets per day, which companies like SpaceX can't even do in a month. Inside a suborbital accelerator lies a span vacuum chamber, within which lies a massive rotating arm. This arm deploys the power of kinetic energy to spin the rocket multiple times the speed of sound. When the intended speed is reached, it is let go and shot off quickly in the air, a CNBC report claims. According to Spin Launch, the first launch was able to propel the rocket at supersonic speeds, while using only 20% of the accelerator's total power. In addition, an altitude of tens of thousands of feet was reached via this accelerator. The current design of the suborbital accelerator by Spin Launch is just a test prototype for its larger-than-life orbital launch system, which has no timeline set for release. Spin Launch will conduct a series of tests with different vehicles throughout 2022 in order to develop and prove its components for the full-scale system, but they face several design challenges along the way. Firstly, this prototype doesn't use high-speed airlocks. Instead, there is a membrane at the end of the exit tube, which is designed to break the projectile's impact on it. This isn't a problem for now, as they are doing launches one after the other. But to achieve commercial success, they will need to design, implement, and prove that they can make high-speed airlocks needed. To go from suborbital to full-blown orbital, spin launch will need a much larger vacuum chamber. The one-third system already generates 10,000 Gs during launch, and it only reaches 5,000 miles per hour. But to achieve low Earth orbit, a craft needs to travel at 17,000 miles per hour. With this, we have reached the end of our video. Congrats on having such a great attention span. What do you think about this creative take on sending rockets into orbit? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.